Let's pause for a moment uh, for the noise reduction. I always think of that as like a moment of silence for something. <laughs> and that's the awkward seconds you're always like, is there like a standard for how long moment of silence this should be? Everyone's just like kind of there waiting for someone to break the silence. This is Control Structure, episode 147, for August 30th, 2018. This episode is brought to you by The Nexus, podcasts from the technological convergence. We should probably say that together sometime. This show has notes. Visit thenexus.tv slash cs147 to see them. Uh, With you today is myself, Andrew Bailey, and the other guy, Stephen Orvis. Hi, Andrew. Hey, so, it's... uh, been not as long. Yeah, not near as long. I think we, we did our two week, didn't we? Yes. So, uh, let's see. Uh, fortunately, or not, uh, apparently I did not have that Windows 10 April 2018 update yet, uh, which, since the last time I recorded, has uh, updated my system and somehow uh, made my Microsoft not work. Thanks, Microsoft. It's kind of funny, because normally I'm the guy with Microsoft problems. So, uh, we seem to have had that sorted out, and uh, we are recording now. So, uh, maybe you can uh, hook that uh, other Microsoft up to your Raspberry Pi. Oh, the one that used to do the buzzing? Uh, yeah, like, didn't you have it connected up there to, like, do a voice command thing? That's correct. Uh, I used to have it hooked up, uh, and uh, Jasper was the name of the software that it was. So you could be like, Jasper, tell me a joke, and it'd, it'd go and tell you a joke. Kind of like Alexa before Alexa was a thing. You mean the voice command Alexa, not the web analytics service? Correct. As we discovered that one time. I forget the instance, but that does sound like a, a thing we've talked about. Yeah. So, uh, anyway... Uh, whenever I uh, came across this article and read the headline, I w- immediately wondered, is this the Chrome on Windows guy? Because it was. Now he's complaining that he has 24 cores and he can't type an email smoothly. Uh, he goes down the lists of things that he thought it could be, uh, but gives the spoiler pretty much right away up front. So, this, the, uh, I forget his real name, but he's the guy that builds Chrome for Windows, like the official build, uh, Bruce Dawson. Uh, he, uh, he has this monster rig, and, like, he runs into all these, like, bugs that no one else would find, and he writes these amazing blog posts about them, about how he, you know, tries to peer down into the Windows kernel and figure out where things go wrong and why things slow down and uh, why sometimes files come back as completely empty when he just compiled them. Uh, It's good that he's taking time to actually document and write some stuff down like that because it's kind of interesting learning from it because I feel like most of the time bugs uh, that turn up just kind of get brushed under, you fix it and you move on with life because hey, that's okay. So, you know, I'm thinking that, uh, you know, he has this 24-core rig. You know what else are 24-core rigs? Servers. Those are pretty important. Uh, So, like, I'm pretty sure that these fixes would have, you know, some impact uh, there. And uh, before long, uh, everyone will have 24-core rigs because that's probably where things are going in the next 5 or 10 years. So, uh... People just, you know, have uh, Chrome sitting on their system, uh, gobbling up uh, two terabytes of virtual memory, and then some scan happens, and it takes, like, several seconds of, like, this... It just completely locks the system for a few seconds while it tries to scan through all of this, wondering if there is an actual, you know, bit of allocated memory, which is essentially what uh, he was running into. It's a rather interesting bug right up. Just uh, how he went through to troubleshoot it and, and figure it out. Yeah, he, he's always, apparently always has this Windows performance analyzer thing running. 
uh, just in case if he, you know, runs across, you know, obscure Windows bugs, which he has, which I think I've kind of lost count. He's he's run into like three or four of them at least. Hmm. I like how he thanked his uh, 2015 or 14 self for for some bug he'd reported. For the, I think it was thread names or something. Yes, yes, uh, like a feature request. Yeah. So he he wrote the write up of you know the you know what it actually was, and then he does a second part of what he thought uh, was the problem. Uh, well, what uh, the handful of things he thought were the problem, but actually weren't. Uh, but he does run into this uh, one weird issue where. Like this one kernel thread lets go of a lock, and then the Chrome tries to grab the lock forty thousand times. It, it it was it's crazy. Didn't you say that in that case it was that this other application was releasing the lock then reacquiring the lock, and it's just the Chrome sat there trying to get the lock that many times. Yeah, but not actually got it once. Yeah. So yeah, fun times. So, let's talk about two-factor authentication for a moment. Uh, so, let's see. If you're if you're on the bleeding edge of security, uh, you've heard the f- heard the little anecdote that although two-factor authentication is great, two-factor authentication over SMS is not exactly a good idea. Um, and you might be wondering why. You know, it, it goes through your phone. It's 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 great. Except the SMS is tied to your phone number, which is tied to a little SIM card, which SIM cards can be replaced uh, pretty easily. Uh, the so for that reason, uh, AT and T uh, it might cost them two hundred and twenty four million dollars because someone socially engineered a replacement SIM out of AT and T for this guy, and then these crooks went and stole his twenty million dollars of Bitcoin. I think even just beyond this uh, SIM card deal, uh, using your phone can have negative things. If someone, if like you lost your phone or something, yeah, or if someone else just accesses it for a time, like it's not really a guarantee that only you have your phone. Yeah, and uh, you know, like most, well, most phones, most uh, default settings on SMS apps. You know, even though it, you might have your phone locked, that. Uh, uh, like they might show a preview of the text message itself, mm-hmm. which might have the code in it. Even, yes, that's even, very true too. Even though the phone itself is locked, it still shows you a little preview. So, uh, you know, this guy says that you know the process of you know sending out a replacement SIM card is you know totally insecure, uh, whatnot, and so forth. So, uh. Not sure if this will work out, but uh, hey, uh, at least at least it uh, you know might give AT and T and perhaps others in the industry a little bit more security over you know how and when they re- will replace a SIM card. Yeah, hopefully we give that. I found it interesting that he was suing for the extra two hundred million. I didn't quite understand his logic there with that one. Pretty much to make him learn a lesson, I guess. Yeah. I'm sure it's going to get noticed. Uh, but uh, this was back in January 2018 when Bitcoin was worth like $15,000. So there's like another ulterior motive that uh, like the Bitcoin that he lost is nowhere worth that much now. Mm. So uh, you remember gaming uh, on Linux? Uh, remember gaming on Linux? I still use Linux. Well, yeah, you use Linux, but do you still game on it? No, I don't really game at all much anymore. My point. <laughs> but uh, hey, Minecraft works on Linux. <laughs> so uh, Valve was doing a really big push for uh, you know Steam on Linux and other gaming stuff on Linux uh, about five years ago mm-hmm. with uh, those Steam machines. You used to have that one map where it'd show you the games it had in Linux and kind of listing them all out. It had been ported. Uh, so it turns out that um, Steam machines didn't exactly go anywhere. 
and that little distribution that they had going uh, kind of flopped, I guess. Uh, so instead, they're trying something a little bit different, uh, but some, something that pretty much everyone else has been doing for a long time. Uh, so Valve is rolling out something called Steam Play. It's basically a fork of wine. Uh, they're calling it Proton, and like they have it up on uh, GitHub and everything. So, uh, yeah, it's it's essentially you know exactly what Wine is. Uh, so instead of like installing another parallel installation of Steam, that's like the Windows version of Steam that will play the Windows versions of games, uh, and like all that goes through Wine. This is pretty much the same thing, except in the Linux Steam client. Mm-hmm. So it seemed like they were saying that there's some new thing uh, in Wine that was allowing, uh, this, like, the DirectX would be better performant for those games. Yeah. Uh, so that new graphics API called Vulkan, uh, it's essentially c- converting uh, Direct3D12, uh, you know, API calls to Vulkan, uh, and apparently also does Direct3D11 as well. So that's uh, going to be fun, hopefully. So uh, it, it was last week that, uh, like, you know, all of those uh, Intel CPU flaws we were talking about? Uh, yes. So apparently Intel released a microcode patch that kind of mitigates those bugs. Uh, but the license agreement to that had a bug, or it used to. It turns out that even a casual reading of it gives you gives you the idea that you could not benchmark Intel CPUs anymore. Uh, so everyone pretty much blew a gasket, and Intel pretty much uh, relented within a day. Uh, but uh, it seemed like this might have been a you know pretty much a copy paste uh, license agreement from somewhere else that apparently no one really read, because who reads these things? <laughs> not even the guys that publish them. <laughs> apparently not. But uh, some other guy got a clever idea to benchmark ad servers and threatened to publish the benchmarks. Uh, so he, he said, you know, in one week I plan to benchmark all your ad delivery systems from IP address block such and such. Please note the attached Intel microcode license may apply. Uh, if you do not want me benchmarking your ad servers, simply blacklist my IP block now. Love, Joey. P.S. The benchmarking will continue indefinitely. Uh, so, the uh, I guess we can we should probably mention you know what exactly it is. Uh, like this license agreement in question, says you will not and will not allow any third party to, and then it goes through like five things, and the last one says publish or provide any software benchmark or comparison test results. Um, so the idea of, you know, getting the, you know, benchmarking the ad servers is that they would have to block his IP to prevent the benchmarking, and because he told the internet that he would be doing this, the ad networks would know it. So, therefore, Intel would be mad at the ad networks. I'm somewhat doubtful that Intel would actually sue anyone over it for a, a pure mistake. It's just more like a pub- publicity stunt to get it more up in the air. Yeah, and uh, it seems like everyone uh, did a good job of uh, you know going nuts over this. So that's good. At least someone reads those things. Yeah. So, uh, you know, again, they, uh, completely replaced this with, uh, something a little bit more, uh, uh, brief and, uh, not as restrictive. Hmm. Uh, but Hey, talking about license agreements, uh, Redis, which is like a caching server thing. I think it's, I think it's called a reverse proxy, but I haven't really looked into it too much. Uh, essentially, it makes it caches things and makes things faster. Well, it's really a NoSQL database. That's what it boils down to being. That's more in, not permanent storage. Okay. I wasn't exactly sure what it was. I really haven't used it or anything. Uh, 
but apparently it now has something called the Commons Clause, which basically says that you can't sell it for money, uh, and uh, you can't uh, essentially build a platform on it and sell that for money. <clears throat> so it seemed like it was the cloud providers that they were not liking who would host it as a service and then charge money for their service. Exactly. Be what they're angry about. Yeah. So it seems that the initial choice of BS of the BSD license that they were using was made out of the spite of the GPL. But when other people start building businesses uh, around Redis, Redis got jealous. Uh, when you give your stuff away without any strings attached, you're implicitly saying that you're cool with someone making loads more money off of it than you will ever see in your lifetime. With GPL, at least they are forced to give back their changes. So, so was I, there some issue that they'd had with GPL? You said something about them being spiting someone for the GPL or something? Yeah, it, it seems like uh, back when they got started that it was essentially cool to hate on the GPL. Uh, you know, just, you know, it's like, oh, no, none of the cool kids are using this, so. I gotcha. Uh, but at this point, you know, once you've licensed something and other people have contributed, like, you'd have to go back and ask them, hey, is it cool if we relicense this stuff? Mm -hmm. And at this point in time, that would probably be a lot of people. Yeah. Someone someplace is going to say no. <laughs> uh so, anyway, uh, we have a little bit of podcast feedback. Uh, so, if you recall last episode, we are officially the most episodic uh, show on the Nexus.tv. And, uh, you know, Ian mentioned that uh, it's going to take a long time for any of the other shows to catch up. To which I responded that we only record about once a month. Uh, which we wanted to record fortnightly. You know, which is every two weeks. It shouldn't be that hard. Uh, to which Ian responded back to that. We don't have any weekly shows anymore, so it'll take a long time. And then he did a Wolfram Alpha thing. Uh, that, and he pointed out that Second Opinion is the most frequent, and that's fortnightly. So at those current rates, uh, Second Opinion every 14 days with 47 episodes already and control structure every 30 days with 147 episodes, it will take 2,625 days or just over 7 years for Second Opinion to catch up, at which point they will have 300... at which point they will have 235 episodes. So we have a good, comfortable lead, then. Yes. And, uh... Because we, uh... have recorded now, uh... every two weeks after the last time... Uh, we're essentially maintaining the lead. Nice. And uh, Wolfram Alpha gives a nice, uh, you know, nice neat chart here, <laughs> showing the intersection of uh, you know when things will happen. <laughs> Let's see what it looks like here. Ah, nice. So, uh, if you had feedback for us, uh, go ahead and put it on Reddit. Uh, you know, guess go over there and locate uh, Control Structure episode 147 and uh, share your thoughts. And yes, I finally created a Reddit account uh, just just for the Nexus.tv. Uh, so don't forget that today is International Backup Awareness Day, so back up all of your license agreements. License agreements. <laughs> So, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, I can hear crickets over there. Yes, I live in the middle of nowhere. Um, I remember growing up in a small town, uh, and we had crickets in the basement. <laughs> Must have been, uh, an open basement that they could go in and out of, kind of like mine. <laughs> it really wasn't all that open, like I suspect they found a crack somewhere. Mm, okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, like, even though I don't like persistent noise, I kind of always liked crickets. They're nice. It's a good, more soothing sound that they make. Yeah. So, and, uh, of course, now that... I'm not sure. Is it the dog days of summer, or is that past? I don't really know. I've heard of that before, but I don't know too much about it. So, like, 
it's essentially decided to get really, really hot now. Mm-hmm. It is hot right now the past day or so. Yeah, like 90, 95 degrees hot. Mm, so, it's hot without air conditioning, that much I know. <laughs> oh, yeah, because you're, you're up in a shack. Yes. So, uh, you know, with with that, uh, you know, you essentially open up the door to the outside, and you this, like, wave of heat so strong that you can hear it because the cicadas are growing. You know, hey, there's a kid just on there. Wow. Um, like not not the uh, like the massive emergence ones, just like the regular annual ones. Oh, okay, I gotcha. That uh, you know, kind of sound like something is winding up, kind of slowly, mm-hmm. and then like winding back down. That's 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 this annual cicada, and like they're really really common, you know, during the summer. <laughs> So that's like to me, that's the sound of summer heat. Mm, I gotcha. So, but uh, this past weekend was pretty nice. Uh, I did thirty miles on on the bike on Saturday, wow. and twenty five Sunday. So how long did it take you to to do the thirty miles? Uh, about two and a half hours or so. Okay. And uh, like you know that uh, derailment that happened. Yes, you told me about it last time. Yeah, they finally have that all fixed up. Oh, that's good. As of about a week ago. So that was actually pretty fast, and I think that was like faster than they thought they should, that they would have got it done. Yeah, yeah, I was pretty sure you had given me a pretty high estimate on that one. So, but uh, yeah. Uh, so let's see, what else? Uh, oh yeah, next week is... Memorial Day? Mm-hmm. Or is it Labor Day? I forget. Uh, it might be Labor Day, I think. It, it's, 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 it's the one that marks the end of summer. That's, that would sound appropriate. <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> so, I guess have a nice three-day weekend. It looks like it might rain all of that. <laughs> no bike, r- bike riding for you then, I guess. No, just stay in and do sit-ups and push-ups and stuff. Oh, there you go. And I finally finished Dead Space 2, which, you know, for being a horror game, it got, got kind of boring and frus- and frustrating. So then again, I played the first one like two or three months ago. So now, now I can relax and play something a little less violent. There you go. So uh, anything exciting happening with you? Oh, some various things. Did I tell you about my my Raspberry Pi kitchen computer? Uh, vaguely. Oh, okay. I, I I remember you mentioning something about a kitchen computer before. Okay, I got that up and going. Uh, kind of had like like one of those arms and then a wall mount on it, so then we can use the computer in the kitchen or spin it around and use it by the table. So we mm. got that up and running. We've used it some. I found that uh, it corrupts the SD card kind of easy, so that makes it a little, little more disappointing on that one. Um, other it, exciting news... It does what with the SD card? It corrupts it pretty easy. Corrupts it, okay. Yeah, because you'd be doing something, then it hangs, and then next thing you know, since it's hung for the past hour, you need to unplug it, and then I guess what, it corrupts the SD card. <laughs> so that's been a, a, a problem I've seen with it. I think power problems maybe helped a little bit there might help that issue some but uh i would wish it to be a little more stable for actually a a day-to-day use it somewhat computer other news i got my finger stuck in a pig's mouth and i got the whole thing out i was happy with that one (laughs) (laughs) yeah i guess i guess sometimes that's not a guaranteed thing yeah i wasn't sure when i pulled it out i was like i don't know if i have any have the end of it anymore i looked down and i saw a nail i was like well that's a lot better than i thought i was gonna have <laughs> so yes so anyways it, it, that that's another way of saying we have pigs now and uh we had a third pig uh i don't know like a week or so ago i guess because i know about your cat and your chickens Mm-hmm. yep you know about the goats uh, I think you mentioned those, yeah. Okay, yep. Yeah, getting uh, goat milk and cheese and things like that. And you of spent course. and you spent the fringe that we didn't record uh, talking about your charger for the fence. 
Yes, the charger for the fence. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we have a horse now too. We got a free horse. So, uh, wow, you're you're just uh, having a zoo up there, aren't you? We are <laughs> supposed to get rabbits this weekend. <laughs> Someone wanted rid of the rabbits, and so they're like, "Here, take our rabbits this weekend." So I guess we would take them, and uh, I guess they're supposed to have babies like towards the end of the year. So I was like, "Well, I can butcher rabbits. That's pretty easy to do." Uh, speaking of, I have not seen my rabbit buddy uh, in the backyard for a month or so. So I guess he was uh, a dinner or something. Mm. They do taste good. So, and, uh, like, was it spotted-tailed hawks? Like, they're starting starting to become a thing around here. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, especially over at, uh, at my office. Mm-hmm. That, uh... Like, even last year, occasionally, like, I would see this hawk, you know, like, in the uh, trees, like, next to the parking lot there. Yeah. Uh, also, when is uh, doe season? You said you got the uh, tags? Ah, yes. So, there's a muzzleloader season in October, like, mid-October, and that's muzzleloader, doe only. And then, uh, on uh, the first Monday after Thanksgiving, I uh, Doe buck season starts, and then that Saturday after that Monday, doe season starts and goes for a whole week. So the real doe season starts in December. We have so, to apply for the tags in July, though. So I'm guessing you're just going to be out there in a tree stand instead of podcasting? Uh, that week, at least, yeah. I, I'm more likely to be <laughs> hunting that week. So I actually took that week off in December there. So I'll hopefully be able to get out and shoot a bunch of deer. So, maybe. wait, wait, you said uh, that would be the first week of December, right? Uh, so, well, we'd have to look at the calendar here, because it's the, the buck season starts the first Monday after Thanksgiving. So that would be the 26th. Like, okay, it's 26th. So then the actual week I have off would be the first week of December. You're right, yep. Uh, which, coincidentally, I also have the first week of December off. But I'll be in Kenya. In where? Kenya. Kenya? Yeah. Oh, the mission strip. Yeah. Oh, nice. So, uh, which, that's kind of coming together. Uh, just so happens that uh, one of the ladies that my mom works with is actually from Kenya. And uh, uh, so she was saying, you know, I was like, okay, well, if you're going to go over, like, just after Thanksgiving... It's going to be the rainy season, so you're going to want to have a good pair of boots. And uh, apparently also uh, there's like bracelets that uh, repel mosquitoes. That uh, might be a good idea to look into. Mm. You don't want to get the West Nile virus or something? Yeah. Uh, well, we have that over here, so... <laughs> well, yeah, it's just if you get bitten more times, it's going to up your chances. True, and Kenya is way closer to the Nile than here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, but wait, it's like probably from like Indonesia or something. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyways, uh, so then apparently she like her brother is uh, over there too. So uh, she was wondering like where where I'm gonna be and stuff. So, but uh, yeah, and like she's like, oh, if. You, you know, going to go over there, want to go on a safari. He's like, yeah, we're, we're planning that. That would be lots of fun. You just doing the one week there or longer? Uh, ten days. Okay. That would probably go really fast, I imagine. Yeah. So, uh, you know, going over there, I expect lots of people uh, who want to get, up, get all up into your business. Uh, lots of kids, lots of noise. And probably lots of things that I'm not exactly comfortable with, but I will put up with anyway. Mm-hmm. Be a so. bit of an adventure. Exactly. So, um, but yeah, that's not going to be for a while. So, uh, also, uh, there's, we're also going to go to a restaurant called Carnivore, which, you know, which is essentially, you know, like all meat and everything. So I, I actually looked it up on Google Maps and, like, uh, apparently there's lots of photos over there of, like, rotisserie meat and, uh, like, also a whole lot of other photos, uh, one of which contained a basket of fries and Heinz ketchup. Just <laughs> just like home. <laughs> there you go. 
Lots so, of ketchup. So, I mean, I, you know, how should I say this? At cooked meat kind of looks the same no matter what animal it comes from. <laughs> so, like, I would not be surprised if I'm eating gazelle or something. It's fun to try meat. I like that the one time yeah. we went with Pasture to that place out in Pittsburgh where you just had the bowls and you would get the raw meat and put it in the bowl and they, they cook it. Oh, uh, kind of Mongolian fun. Grill? Oh, okay. Yeah, it was by the Cheesecake Factory across the road, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was Mongolian Grill. Okay. That's, uh, like, yeah, so, yeah, it was the place where they had, like, I'm not sure if they were, like, carts or something that you, you know, pulled things off into a big dish. And then, like, the grill was, like, big round thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. that's, yep. Pastor's a big fan. Yeah, that's a good place. Anyways, um, I guess everyone else is bored of what we're talking about, but who cares? Yeah, I guess we will uh, be back uh, in maybe two weeks. You're coming down here again? Uh, I should be back down there again in two weeks, so we see kind of how schedules and things work out. All right. We've been having busy, busy weeks here past few weeks because we're going going out to uh, Ohio for the next few weeks. My sister-in-law is getting married now this weekend, so we have that to, mm. that to go to. So lots of things like that. Alright, so have a good one. Okay, you too. The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from the. <laughs>